Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. Today we've got another box from the folks at Hacker Boxes. This is Hacker Box 119, and the name is Geoposition. Let's get this on the bench and see what we have inside here. This looks like our 2.8 inch 320 by 240 touch display with this handy SD card slot on it. Pretty nice. And you'll see here we've got some header pins and a little stylus that works with the touchscreen. This looks like our ESP Room 32 development board. This looks like our 16 gig micro SD flash memory card, and that also includes a micro SD to SD card adapter, which we'll need to use it in that display. This is our L80R GPS module with integrated patch antenna. And here we've got some extra header pins. And this is our exclusive thrifty Yeti locator printed circuit board. Pretty nice looking PCB there. Here we've got a cool ESP32 Marauder logo sticker. And here we've got the first sheet in a series of hacker movie stickers. And these are the creation of the very talented and super duper nice guy, Talking Sasquatch. If you've not checked out his channel, go check it out. He's got great stuff and seems like a really nice dude. I spoke with him and said hi very briefly at the Hacker Box table at DEF CON 33. And last but certainly not least, we've got our Hacker Box 119 collectible reference card with our GPS module pinout information here on this side. And we've got our ESP32 module pinout information on this other side. Just like they always do, the folks from Hacker Boxes have included a great set of instructions here available on Instructables. I have a link to that in the description. But even if you don't have the Hacker Box, you might find it pretty handy. And in case you missed it when I was scrolling by, the thing at the very top of the Instructable there, Box 119, marks 120 boxes. So if you divide that by 12, that's 10. So be looking at 10 years of Hacker Box goodness as of this box. And we know that it's still going and we hope it goes for many years to come. So I think we need to give a little shout out and a little bit of congratulations to the folks at Hacker Boxes. That's pretty awesome. All right, so the first thing the Instructable tells us to do is plug up our ESP32 dev board to our computer with a USB-C cable. And we should see a solid red light. And it looks like we see that right there. So that's a pretty good first step to let us know that at the base level, the board's probably okay. So that's a good first test to do. Okay, the next thing the Instructable wants us to do is fire up Arduino and you can install it if you don't have it already. And within Arduino, you wanna to go to the boards manager and you wanna search for ESP32 by Espressive Systems and you wanna select that board package and hit install. Now in my case, I already had that installed so I won't have to install it. And then from the top menu, we wanna to go to tools, board, ESP32, ESP32 dev module. And then we want to select tools port and you want to pick the port that popped up when the ESP32 was connected. And in this case, I think it's COM5. And next we want to go to file example basics blink. And at the very top, we want to add a line here, like it says in the instructable, define LED underscore built in two at the top of the sketch. That's a must have for this to work properly. And then we want to push that to the board. And if all that is okay, we should see the blue LED that it's connected to pin two blinking. All right, so next in our Instructable, we're gonna be looking at the Thrifty Yeti Locator. And the big thing about this one that's kind of cool is it is very much the same as the cheap yellow display that we did back in HackerBox 99. And if you look at that video, and I'll put a link to mine, and there's also a nice uh, video for the guy who really kind of got all these projects together for the GPL display. There's a ton of different software that you can run on this besides the immediate thing we're gonna do here. And actually we'll do one of those in this video, but just keep your mind open to all the fun things you can do with this once you get it built. Now the first thing I wanted adding to my board here was this GPS module and the instructable makes a point to make sure you have the orientation right. You wanna make sure that when you put it face down or PCB side down, that this part right here, this pin with this arrow, lines up with this pin on the PCB with that arrow. 
or you can just use the completed reference photos as a clue to how to orient it. This soldering can be a little finicky. I used a piece of blue tack to kind of hold it in place while I got started. And this is what you call like a castellated style connection here on the module. There's a nice tutorial link in the Instructable from SparkFun that walks you through the best uh, tips and tricks for soldering these kind of connections. It's not too bad, but it might take a little practice. After I got the module on, I came back with a little IPA and a brush to clean that up. Far from perfect, but good enough. After the GPS module was on there, I went ahead and moved forward with the rest of the assembly. Right here at the beginning of the Instructable in the assembly section, it's warning you to not break four pins off of the 14 pin header that's for the display and that's exactly what i did because i swear i had the 16 pin one in my hand but for whatever reason i immediately learned here off i think i'm out of the shot that i had broken the wrong one it's not the end of the world i put them next to each other and soldered it in place it's okay but uh you know if you want to save yourself a little bit of hassle just pay attention to which one you're snapping the four pins off of do it off the longer one and not the 14 pin one I'm gonna not ramble as much as I usually do when I'm soldering things. I believe that these will be pretty self-explanatory about what I'm doing as I'm putting it together. If you do see something that makes you have a question, just throw it in the comments and I'll try to answer your question. Thanks. With that done, it was time to plug it back up to get ready to try out some test firmware. Okay, so back over on the Instructable, we can see it references GPS test firmware. And one thing we we'll want to note here, it says at the top of the sketch, there are three libraries to load into the Arduino IDE. So we're going to keep in mind of that note when we get into the file. And it's going to have a link here a little bit lower. We're just going to click on that and that's going to help us open up this sketch in our local Arduino. And so what you're going to see me do here is just open up the library manager and I'm going to go through each one of these libraries mentioned in this comment and search for them. And if I have it, it's fine. You'll see that. And if I don't have one of these, you'll see me install it. And that's pretty much it. You just want to make sure that we've got all the three of these covered. With all those libraries verified, the only thing we have to do was to push the code to the board. And I did that. And as you can see here, after it pushed and booted up, it's in this acquiring satellites mode. Now here in the basement where the hack shack is, there's no way this is going to work. So I went out to the car since it's a little chilly and sat there for a minute. And then before long, it actually did get a fix. I took these numbers and kind of bounced around in Google Maps a little bit. I'm not going to show that, of course, but it was pretty darn accurate. And for the next thing in the Instructable, we're told to download the... TYL GPS map sketch as well as right click and save on that US bitmap up there and they mentioned this Gulf Gate bitmap but that was just more specific to an area where the headquarters for Hackerboxes is so I didn't bother with getting that um, like it says here where I'm highlighting but I did get the I right clicked on that one of the US and saved it as US.bmp and I did get that SD card and I think it was pre-formatted, but some of these I've had so much trouble with, I went ahead and formatted it out of the gate to FAT32 just to start from square one with it. With my SD formatted and that map file copied to it, I took it out of my reader and stuck it in the adapter and then stuck it into the SD card slot on the device. I then plugged it back up to my PC so I could push that new sketch to it. Back over on the PC, I followed that link to download the TYL GPS map sketch and I opened that up in Arduino. 
similar to the one we just did. This one's got a list of libraries we need to make sure we've got in it at the top there in the comments. So like before, I just go through and search for each one of these. And if I don't have something, I install it. And if I have it, I don't worry about it. And after I get all those, I push this code to the board. Now I will say on my PC, on my bench here, it's not the latest and greatest, but it's not a slouch, but it took a little bit to compile it. So if you're doing this on the machine and it seems like it's taking a while, it's uh, it's not hung up or anything. It's just chugging along. So if you want to, you can actually turn on verbose output for when you compile and that will let you see that it's not actually just hung and stuck there. The new code booted up on it okay, but like I mentioned before, there's no way it's getting a signal down here in the basement. So I took it upstairs to give it a test outside from the front porch real quick. And as you can see here, it worked just fine and acquired signal and put a dot on the map. Now, I don't mind showing you this dot because it's actually not very accurate at all. But that's the cool thing about a hacker box. We've got the code, we've got the hardware, and we can tinker around in there and see what's going on. See if we can tweak it a little bit. Okay, so the next thing the Instructable invites us to check out is this ESP32 Marauder version that was made slash ported to the GPL display by the awesome Frank Fletcher. And we can use his really easy to use web flasher to do this. So basically you just hook up the USB back to the thrifty Yeti locator and we're going to follow these steps right here. And the big thing I want to emphasize is the part where I was talking about, you know, before hitting connect and the pop up, hold down the bootstrap button then hit the reset button and keep the bootstrap button pressed until you hit connect and then see try hard reset and then release the button. You may have to play around with this part in the middle here a little bit or maybe a lot to get it just right. So just don't give up. It took me a few tries to kind of get my timing just right, but it does work. And I'll show you in the next shot here that it does. And when that finishes, you've got a pretty cool little tool here to play around with wireless stuff. And I think, I uh, hope it goes without saying, please don't mess with stuff that you don't have permission to. Don't give some poor sap that's working during the holidays a hard time because you're just goofing around. That's not very cool. But anyway, I'm not going to go into all the different things this thing will do. It's pretty cool. And now with this GPS module, you can actually do kind of a little bit of war driving with it and uh, map some stuff. Of course, with this particular ESP32, you're going to be limited to 2.4 gigahertz, but it still could be something fun to play with and learn some stuff with. There's a lot of other really neat stuff to check out in the Instructable. And there's even mention of that little chat that we had where we were talking about DEF CON 33. And it does look like they still have some of those little DEF CON 33 mini badges. And all that you have to do is pay shipping and you can get those. So you might want to check that out. That's pretty cool. And this thing about the obfuscated code is pretty fun. And there's just this all kind of cool stuff in there. So go check it out. It's free. Also check out the comments below the Instructable. There's a lot of folks talking about some tweaks and tricks they did. And you can see what they've done. Some customizing type things with the code related to GPS stuff. Pretty cool. But that just leaves me with one question. If we're building a thrifty Yeti locator and it just shows us where we are, are we the thrifty Yetis? It looks like we're going to have ourselves another giveaway. The nice folks at Hacker Boxes have graciously offered to send a Hacker Box 119 to a randomly picked commenter. We'll be picking the comment on December 14th, 2025. And remember, Hacker Boxes only ships to U.S. addresses for this giveaway. So if your comment's picked, but you don't have a U.S. shipping address that we can use, we'll need to pick someone else. Good luck. At the time of this recording, there are still Hacker Box 119s in stock. If you don't win the giveaway and want to get one, check them out or go ahead and subscribe. Hey, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.